The following blog will discuss two exercises, the back squat and the power clean on two athletes. In each of these exercises, the two athletes demonstrated their lack of skill or capacity while performing the lifts. The two athletes in question were novices who had limited experience of the exercise. The first athlete in question, who had characterised as having quite long levers in relation to his femur and his torso being quite short, developed a strategy whereby he had an excessive forward lean. Um, this forward lean, whereby his trunk and tibia run parallel with one another, creates quite a lot of posterior displacement in order to get into sufficient depth. The success of forward lean strategy allowed him to maintain balance as his centre mass is still over his base of support. However, this creates quite a lot of excessive force uh, getting transferred uh, to the lumbar and hip area, as is an unequal distribution of force. As we can see, there is quite a lot of forward uh, trunk lean um, while he's performing the exercise. Um, I did a simple uh, test in relation to looking at his capacity in relation to dorsiflexion um, by getting him to perform a lunge bearing wall uh, test and he, he measured quite favourably. Um, one of the, the coaching strategies, therefore, as I felt was a, a lack of poor motor planning while performing the exercise, I got the athlete to do some box squats, um, whereby I got him to do the exercise both under control in both phases of the mo of the, the exercise, um, so in the eccentric and concentric phase. Um, I got him to sit on the box and then concentrate on his upright trunk position. Once I was happy with that, then I progressed him into more explosive box squats, whereby in the eccentric phase it was still under control, getting him to maintain the upright trunk. Um, but when he was sitting on the box, um, I um, used an external cue of imagine sitting on some broken glass. So therefore, once his glutes had touched the box, he was able to explode up. Um, this, I felt, was, was quite a good strategy. He still he was able to maintain that upright trunk position um, while performing the exercise. Um, and then progressed him onto unloaded squats and then eventually got him loaded, um, whereby he was in a much better position. The second athlete performed the back squat and again demonstrated both a lack of skill and capacity while performing the exercise. We can see here, uh, again, there is excessive uh, lean, as previously discussed as well, as what really concerned me was lumbar sacrum flexion at the bottom of the, the exercise, um, particularly as it was loaded. My initial impression was that I felt it was a capacity issue as opposed to a skill-related issue, um, as there was weakness within her posterior chain, and muscles, her gluteal complex, her hamstring muscle groups, and her extensors of her lower back. In the eccentric phase, or, or she's just collapsing there um, in relation to her glutes not being strong enough. Um, and therefore, there's excessive lean as well as lumbar flexion. What I did, I measured her capacity in relation to dorsiflexion as well through the ankle um, by doing a similar test uh, as previously discussed uh, in relation to a lunge uh, bearing wall test. Uh, and she performed pretty poorly on that. Um, so one of the coaching strategies that I employed was, well, firstly to unload her um, and also put wedges underneath her feet. Um, therefore, she should be able to get into a much better position in terms of an upward, uh, sorry, a, a more upright trunk. Um, I got her to reduce uh, the amount of um, range of movement that she was performing um, and as a result of that, we were seeing a much better position in relation to um, uh, maintaining a, a neutral spine. Um, there was other strategies I obviously employed within our programming, um, addressing issues with regards to her posterior chain muscle groups, um, but getting her to perform exercises like single leg exercises, beginning split squats, um, razors, hip thrusts, etc. Um, in relation to her posterior chain. The second exercise the athlete performed was a power clean. While performing the exercise, it was felt that it was very much a skill uh, issue with this athlete. He was able to execute what resembled a power clean. However, it's apparent um, that he had a one pull strategy um, while performing the exercise. As we can see, the trajectory of the bar is very much in a vertical line with little extension of the ankle, the knee or the hip. Um, so therefore he's not able to get into an optimal power position um, and execute 
the, the ex- exercise as efficiently as he, as he could. One of uh, my coaching strategies um, was to break down the skill um, into its uh, derivatives. Um, a strategy to improve the motor line of the athlete um, is to uh, break it down into its derivatives. I'm aware that coaches have different philosophies with regards to this. I try to embed all aspects of the, the exercise within their programs. In this instance, I looked at the first pool. What I was trying to get the athlete to do was focus on the first pull and get the bar up and back with him while he extended the knees. Um, what we can see here is that, well, he, he simply hasn't done that. He's extended the knees, but the bar is still quite a distance away from him. Um, so therefore, he's not in a, in a particularly good position to get into that kind of transition phase into the second pull. Um, one strategy that I employed with this particular athlete um, was by putting some um, training discs behind him um, and just got him to focus on knocking over the training discs. Um, as we can see, this, when performing the first pull, um, it is just going in that, that vertical line, as it were. As we can see, um, I've set them up here um, with a couple of Polini training discs behind them. Um, and all I wanted them to focus on was, was knocking them over. So an external cue was knock over the discs. Um, so therefore, as a result of that, as we can see, the bar is going up and back with him while he's extending the knees. Although he's not extending them as, as much as I'd like to. Um, but it was a successful strategy in order to get him to execute this particular part of the lift um, of the, the first pull. Um, I felt it was quite effective. So therefore we can see that the, the bar has gone up and back with the athlete. The second athlete also performed the power clean uh, although the athlete performed the exercise reasonably well, there appears to be a capacity issue regarding mobility and also uh, posterior strength, as previously discussed and highlighted with, within our, our back squat, and it was pretty evident here as well. In this instance, there's a lack of uh, thoracic extension, and he also has a difficulty in getting the correct position and demonstrates flexion of the thoracic spine. Uh, spine. There are a variety of strategies that can put in place uh, for this athlete in order to, for her to execute the skill uh, as, a rela- as a lack of capacity. Um, again, I broke down the derivatives of the lift um, as uh, the previous athlete, um, and in this instance, I got her to focus on the first pull. What I did was I... Um, I raised the barbell, raised the height of the barbell by placing discs un- under the discs of the bar. As we can see, the flexion of the thoracic area, area has improved quite considerably. Um, however, again, I would program uh, posterior chain uh, exercises for this particular athlete to address weaknesses in the extensors of the spine, which uh, I have discussed previously. Uh, I'd also look for an improvement in a sub- subscapular retraction um, so, for example, I'd get her to do some more overhead work, uh, overhead squats, for example. Um, also getting her to focus really on her scum- subscapular retraction uh, while performing the exercises and all exercises. To summarise, um, both athletes had either skill or capacity issues um, that with coaching intervention and programming can address some of the deficits that the athlete showed within this particular presentation.